Created by a mad god and doomed to extinction, this is the story of the Metathran. Hatchlings and welcome to a special, a very special, I'm just saying that to make it sound better, magic lore video where we are going to talk about the Metathran, created by none other than Urza, the man who became a mad god. There is so much cool lore involving Urza and his idea of how to overthrow the Phyrexians, how to finally destroy the Phyrexians actually is a better way to put it. Just in very broad strokes, in case you don't know who Urza is, Urza is a man who got into a war of power with his brother. He ascended to being a planeswalker. His brother unfortunately fell victim to the Phyrexians. Urza basically tried to bring the war to Phyrexia. He ended up going crazy from that. Actually, I touched on this previously in a video where I talked about Xantia. It's one of actually the, the biggest, uh, the most viewed lore videos on the channel. So I'll link it at the end in case you wanna check that one out as well. It's a beautiful story. So Urza didn't give up on his war with Phyrexia. He was just like a dog with a bone. He was not letting it go. So he created a, instead of, Originally, his plan was to rush in and destroy Phyrexia. He realized he didn't have the power, so he had to play the long game. He had to develop long-term strategies to, over time, defeat Phyrexia. And part of the strategies was what was known as the Bloodline Projects. Now, this involved multi-prongs. This actually involved creating different bloodlines, basically getting people to intermarry and things of that nature. That's a story for another time that leads to the Capuchins and all this sort of stuff over in Benali, all over the world. But that's not what we're gonna focus on today. Today, we're gonna focus on talking about the Metathran specifically, which were a bioengineered race of individuals that Urza created specifically to fight the Phyrexians. So, they are blue-skinned warriors. They all look like men, but they're actually genderless. They're like, uh, you ever seen a Ken doll when you take the pants off? Don't ask me why you're taking the pants off a Ken doll, but I bet that you have. So, anyways, down there, nothing. Actually, it's kind of funny. If you think about Meta, if you think about the Metathran, and you think about, what is it, the Metatron or whatever, if you've seen that movie Dogma, where he pulls his pants down and there's nothing there, it's the exact same thing, interestingly enough. So, you have the Metathran. Now, these, these were created, you can actually, let's, let's put an example up to show you what they look like. We'll just throw up Metathran Soldier from Urza's Destiny. Now, I really like this artwork, actually, as this guy's pictured here between the waterfalls. He's got his hand resting on his blade in just kind of a pose of ever-readiness unblockable, unstoppable, and you can read the flavor text. It says, just as Sarah crafted angels of light and faith, Urza constructed an army of sorcery and power to resist the coming invasion. So these are all blue skinned male looking warriors. Now, not warriors, sorry. They're uh, obviously, they come in different stripes as well. Warriors, wizards, for example, Skyweaver is, uh, is a Metathran wizard. That's the uh, two one that gives guys white or black creatures flying. So you can see, basically, during the time of the Metathran, they were used in a grand coalition of a bunch of different people who came together to fight Phyrexians. Now, these Metathran were created inside of these incubators. Urza had all these incubators and ways of creating these Metathran. So Urza's incubator actually depicts the artwork, showing him with his hand here. Actually, that's not Urza, sorry. That's, uh, is, that, is, that, is that Baron? I can't tell if that's supposed to be Urza or Baron there, truthfully. I think it might be Baron. Either way, Urza's incubator is the artifact that shows an actual Thran. The, the, the point is the Metathran, not the Thran. The Metathran were inspired by the Thran. Urza created the Metathran based off of the Thran, all right? So, the flavor text is interestingly enough. Stop thinking like an artificer, Urza, and start thinking like a father. Rain, Chancellor of the Telerian Academy. Rain and Baron both tried to kind of pull Urza back to sanity. They tried very, very much to try and restore some of his sanity and balance him out because his genetic engineering program was kind of crazy. There was a bunch of wizards who were split. There was some who were like, no, no, no. I washed my hands of this. I want nothing to do with it. 
and they left the Telerian Academy as a result, refused to participate in what Urza was doing, creating these Metatheran, storing them in storage matrices. You could actually see that on the artwork for storage matrix. It's pretty funky looking there. So that's where he would keep these Thran stored, these Metatheran, remember, Metatheran, okay? Now, what happened was because of this schism in the Telerian Academy, you had a bunch of wizards going, nope, I'm leaving. And the ones that were left were the ones with more questionable morals, right? Who are just kind of like, ah, oh, you know what, I'm fine with experimenting on different beings, genetically engineering beings. And because more of these uh, Telerian researchers had left, there wasn't as much oversight. So you end up with people like Gatha, who's a character we'll talk about at another time. He goes rogue and he ends up creating, like he goes and starts doing experiments on Keldons and things, and it leads to all kinds of ugliness. It draws Phyrexia to them as well. But that's a, that's a story for another time. I don't want to get sidetracked too much by that. But it's interesting to note that the Telerian Academy was split down the middle, essentially, with a bunch of people going, no, 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 I'm not going to be involved with this craziness, or is it? It's not going to happen. So the Metathran, they actually used living airships similar to the Weatherlight. And you can see that on the artwork and the card of living airship, where you have, you have these Metathran warriors flying along. The ship has a crew of three, the pilot, the gunner, and the ship itself, because the ship is alive and aware. And the Weatherlight was part of the legacy weapon that Urza created to go ahead and be the massive ultimate weapon against Phyrexia. And that actually involved the Bloodline project as well, but not specifically the Metathran. The Metathran, unfortunately, were doomed to extinction due to the fact that they could not procreate. They were all cre they were created for one purpose, to be warriors alone. This is one of the reasons that people had a problem with it and were like, no, I don't want to do this. We're creating these and they're doomed to extinction because they're just, you're making, you're making a tool. You're turning a living race into a tool for an end as opposed to like, oh, let's create them and let them live free and whatnot. It's kind of, there's some real parallels between Urza and Yogmoth when it comes to what they did. I mean, Yogmoth created the Phyrexians, which are metal and man melded together, made into unfeeling monsters that are meant to destroy. And the Metathran, aside from two exceptions, are basically unfeeling monsters meant to destroy, right? I mean, they're on the side of good, but really, it's a matter of almost becoming what you hate. Urza is a really interesting character because that duality to him. He doesn't have this cookie cutter sort of, I'm good, like the current planeswalkers do. He was a lot more interesting and deep as a character. So the whole Metathran project basically was headed, uh, not the project itself, but the Metathran army was led by two special Metathran commanders who were bred specifically for that purpose, Agnate and Thaddeus. And they surprised Urza in that they were actually capable of emotion and they were connected. They, they basically considered each other brothers. So they were very important to each other. Now, most of the Metathran were kept inside of time bubbles. Now, if you don't know what those are, at one point, one of the things Urza did to try and thwart Phyrexia was time travel. So, he started basically creating, creating different golems and things like that and messing around with time. He eventually settled on, that's how Karn came about. He found out that Silver was very resistant to the turbulence and destructive nature of time travel. That's where Karn came about. But, sending Karn back through time like that actually caused time to destabilize. So he ended up with all these different time bubbles around the Isle of Teleria. And these different time time zones, time bubbles, there would be fast bubbles and there would be slow bubbles. So in the slow bubbles, you would have a situation where everything is like, everything is slowed down. And you, time passes normally for you inside of it, but from the outside to everybody else, you are in a super slow, slow area. And then there's the fast time zones where things happen much more rapidly than they do in the real world. So by using these different time bubbles, Urza was able to basically maximize the efficiency of his army, right? So using the fast time bubbles, he could put Metathrans in there to grow and they would grow rapidly. He would be able to grow armies, armies of them quickly inside this fast time bubble because time's going by like this, to generation after generation. They're just not generations in this case with Metathran. It's not the right term to use, but basically more, more and more and more Metathran are being birthed through Urza's mechanical, not mechanical, magical mechanisms, right? So you've got slow time bubbles where basically what, what you do inside of there 
is uh, you you have um, you have they uh, sorry I'm I'm getting a little I'm getting a little uh, a little off track here with the slow time bubbles. It doesn't matter. Basically, all you need to know. I don't want to. This is a problem with the lore. There's so much that I get pulled in all these different directions, trying to give you enough to understand the story, but not to overwhelm you. But anyways, through the use of these time bubbles, you've got fast time bubbles and things like that. You can essentially accelerate the growth of your troops. You can also accelerate their training. They can spend a lot of time training with very little time passing in the real world, essentially, right? So that's how Agnate and Thaddeus were Thaddeus were trained up. Basically, they had a whole bunch of time to come out of there and they're ready to go. And basically, inside the fast time bubble, a crazy amount of time has passed. But outside the fast time bubble, barely any time has passed. So it's just basically like, they would set up these research facilities inside of these time bubbles, do all this stuff, get these guys cranked out, bring them back into real time, and be like, Papa! it's just like, create an army instantaneously, even though that's not technically what happened. It's very, very interesting stuff. So, that's how they ended up with a crazy amount of Metathran. Now, both of the Metathran leaders ended up, ended in tragedy in different ways. What happened was, Thaddeus and Agnate had basically almost like a telepathic bond. But the problem is, unbeknownst to Urza, the Thran upon which the Metathran were based were actually Phyrexian, basically. The Thran became Phyrexian. So Phyrexians and Metathrans share a common ancestor, essentially. Like, that that's basically how it works. They're almost cut from the same cloth. And because of this, Sabo Tavik who was a Phyrexian commander at the time, was able to kind of pick up on that link between Thaddeus and Agnate. And it made Sabo go, hmm, there's something, there's something to this. So when Agnate and Thaddeus led their legions of Metathrans against the Phyrexians, what Sabo did was Sabo allowed um, Thaddeus to basically breach through the army, but bogged down Agnate so they wouldn't be together. And then once Thaddeus got further enough into the Phyrexian lines, then he was surrounded, cut off, and captured by Sabo. And at that point, Sabo started to experiment on him. And you can actually see there's different magic cards that represent this in the artwork. You can see it happening in the artwork of Probe, where you can actually see he's being restrained by Sabo's gigantic metallic legs, and she's like driving a spear or something into his chest, probing around in his insides. You can see it again in the Phyrexian altar, where Sabo's standing over um, Thaddeus here. And Sabo even says, your life was meaningless, but your death will glorify Yogmoth. And there's a third card as well, where you can see this sort of, uh, basically he ends up being vivisected and pulled apart. And you can see this in the Phyrexian lens where he's being tortured as well. And there's Sabo saying, there's nothing I wouldn't give to achieve victory on the flavor text. It's very, very cool. So what happens is Thaddeus ends up just vivisected. He's only left as a head and a rib cage. On top of that, he's emotionally tortured as well because he found out through the experiments that he has the same origins as the Phyrexians. Basically, they're cut from the same cloth and he can't handle that. He cannot handle it. So Agnate, when he finally makes his way to Thaddeus, Thaddeus basic, um, Agnate basically wants Thaddeus to be given a new body to be made whole. But Thaddeus is like, no, 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 I don't want this. I am an abomination. I no longer wish to fight for Urza. Please end my suffering. So Agnate essentially slays his own twin brother. And this weighs very, very, very heavily on Agnate. So Agnate is all forlorn, and along comes Dralnu. Now Dralnu was a necromancer lich lord who happened to bear a striking resemblance to Thaddeus. So Dralnu offered to help in the war against the Phyrexians, and basically Agnate was kind of lured in and suckered in by him. Dralnu ends up actually infecting, he actually ends up in, through, through the guise of friendship, he ends up infecting Thaddeus with a particular type of necrosis that's going to turn him into undead under um, Dralnu's control, because Dralnu was like, okay, I want the Metathran for my own, I want them to serve me. And you can actually see this happening uh, in the artwork of exotic disease. Do not fear death. I shall release you from the eternal bronze and bring you glory. And that's a quote from Lord Dralnu. And actually, if you really want to see how much uh, Dralnu looks like a Metathran, you can see that in the Allied Strategies artwork, where you have um, 
I believe it's Grizzle Grom is his name, the Minotaur there. And you have Agnate and you have Dralnu all lifting their blades together. And the flavor text says each commander looked at the others and wondered who would be the first to break the alliance. So at a certain point, Grizzle Grom actually ends up slaying Agnate after Agnate has been brought low by Dralnu's betrayal. And Dralnu tries to play it off to the Metathran as if Grizzle Grom just, oh, he's the one who took out Agnate, I'm blameless. So they end up actually conducting a trial where they bind up Grizzle, Bra Grizzle Grom and Dralnu. They put a bag over their head, bind their hands up, and then they conduct their own investigation. And they decide actually to side with Grizzle Grom they behead Dralnu, wipe out his undead legions, and that's just, that's how Dralnu ends. It's it's interesting to note that he is very, very Metathranish looking in the artwork. You can see he's got the same kind of blue skin, and even the same, like, body shape and everything as Thaddeus would. So there's a, there's a lot of tragedy going on with this, and as an end result of everything that happened, um, the Phyrexians actually ended up getting... Metathran DNA and bringing Metathran zombies under their control. And you can see that in the Metathran zombie artwork where you can see a Metathran corpse rising up with a Phyrexian, like part of a Phyrexian appendage, like a bladed arm or something, sticking up out of the back and it's rising. It says, rise Metathran, you shall serve a nobler cause in death. And the Metathran actually were supposed to be the precursors for the core. The Phyrexian stole part of the Metathran's DNA, used it to create the core, and the core were uh, later retroactively changed to be natural residents of Zendikar. Now, I personally didn't appreciate that change. I actually, I don't know why they did that. They easily could have just had them be a relocated species who decided to move to Zendikar, but they, retro, they retconned the storyline, which I don't really go for. But the Metathran played a pivotal role in the massive war against the Phyrexia. They were a big part of the coalition. You could see them. Urza sent the Metathran to aid races, all the different races, all the different colors that were willing to ally with him. So there's actually a ton, a ton of artwork with Metathrans in the back. But they are incredibly tragic characters. I mean, the, the only two that could really feel emotions ended up both being betrayed and destroyed horrifically, which is just, it's its really sad for them. And the Metathran themselves no longer exist because they, they were created in a way where there was no way to procreate, no way to keep their species going. They were bred for one purpose, for war against the Phyrexians. But in a way, they are an echo of the Phyrexians, which is why it was so easy for Phyrexia to take their DNA and use them to make the core. So to, to me, overall, they're a very tragic race, but very very interesting as well. It's a very interesting part of magic history. We're going to talk more about the the Bloodline Project because there's a lot of interesting characters that come from the Bloodline Project. We've got Hannah, Krovax, Gerard, just to name a few. Urza had a huge hand in manipulating a lot of destinies as the Mad God. And so it's it's a really compelling story to me. So we will get into that further. So if you want to see that stuff, make sure you come on back and check it out. I'm going to go ahead now and check in with the hatchlings. Enough of you, Watsi. And together, we are the Hatchlings. If you have not already submitted a We Are the Hatchlings clip, then please do so. I like very much including members of my community in my videos. It's it's a lot of fun to get to do this. This is not something I see on a lot of channels. We're a group, we do this all together. It's good times. Now, let us roll the golden scroll. The people who have my back on Patreon or through channel memberships genuinely appreciate you supporting the channel. If you like what I do, consider supporting it through Patreon or through channel memberships. 
it makes a huge difference. So, thanks for being here, friends. I will be streaming some Magic the Gathering and other games over on my Twitch channel, so if you want to come and hang out, you are more than welcome, and I shall see you guys and a few of you ladies tomorrow. Hail to the king, baby!